Hi folks and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you the process of creating the Yoxo project recipes for software that's written in Rust that kind of already exists, that's third party software that people have written. So the in first demo that I did I showed creation of recipes for simple Hello World application and simple application to print around a number where I'd put those pieces of software together myself. But there's a you know pretty simple bits of software, not really very interesting. So what I'm going to do in this video is say is pick up a couple of more interesting bits of software written in Rust, show you the process of creating and testing and debugging recipes for those. And the two bits of software that we're going to be looking at are a text editor called Ox and a tool called RipGrep which is a modified maybe improved version of Grep and both of those as I say written in Rust. So let's dive in. So as a bit of an introduction I'm going to show you around the Meta Rust demo layer that I've created. Um, this is based on what I did in my demo of using Rust with the Octo project. I've basically captured the recipes I created into a layer and got it in a nice place for testing and for building on with further work. So if I look in recipes demo under the Rust directory I've got the two basic recipes that I created previously. So Hello RS is a Hello World application written in Rust and we've got the recipe for this here generated with Cargo Bitbake. Print Rand is an application that prints a different random number every time we run it so we've got the recipe for this in here as well. And under recipes demo images we have a Rust demo image recipe which basically picks up core image minimal and adds to it these two Rust based applications that we have recipes for. So that's essentially our meta Rust demo layer. We've also got a layer configuration to make this work this is compatible with the Dunfell LTS release of the Octo project. I've not updated this for the new Gatesgarth release yet. I've also got a CAS configuration file. Um, CAS is a tool that kind of automates the process of downloading repositories, checking out what we want, configuring a local.com file, bblayers.com file, and running a bitbake build. So this is what we're going to use as a configuration for testing this. We're going to target an ARM64 QMU machine, a Pocky distribution, and we're going to build our Rust demo image that was that we've shown you already. We're looking at the Dunfell branch of everything. We're pulling in the Pocky repository, the Meta OE layer and the Meta Rust layer, so we've got a working Rust toolchain. And then we've just got some configuration for the bblayers.conf and local.conf files. These are essentially just copies of the settings that are in the templates that are in the Pocky repository anyway, but with CAS we need to specify all this ourselves. So yeah, and at the top level we've got the sort of usual files we find. And that's that's our layer. So what we're going to do today is add a couple of things to this layer. The thought process I've got is you know, we've, we've wrote recipes for very simple Rust-based applications that I wrote myself. Wrote is maybe a bit of an exaggeration for the Hello World one because it was just 
use the content that was generated by running cargo in it. But how about some recipes for other software for things that are written in Rust that already exist? So today what I want to do is add a couple of recipes for two applications that I've found. So one of these is called Ox. So if we go on crates.io so we can find this. So Ox. I think this is pointing me at the wrong thing here. So I know it's an editor, so let's search for Ox editor. Cool, this is the one we wanted. So yeah, this is a text editor that's in Rust. So that's going to be a good application to show off. We're also going to look at RipGrep. So RipGrep is a re-implementation of grep that I is written in Rust. I think it's intended. Yeah, so the, the, the benefit here is it's a little bit faster than git grep and has some additional features. So yeah, we're going to try creating a recipe for this that we can build this for our target. We're going to try creating a recipe for this so we can build this for our target. So yeah, that's our goal today. Let's see where we get. So I've got a checkout of the MetaRust demo layer here. And the only difference I've got is I've got my site configuration file on here that just on my build machine says where to put downloads and where to put the shared state. So other than that we've just got our layer checked out ready to go. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the Ox editor and try and put together a recipe for that. So the way the cargo bit bake tool works is we need to be in a git checkout of the software that we want to create a recipe for. So if we look at this page again, we should be able to find the URL to clone this from. And we're going to git clone this, and we're going to check out this latest release, 2.5. We don't really want to be messing around with pre-release code while we're trying to build some recipes. I'm going to make a source directory, and inside this we're going to git clone the Ox editor and we're going to check out I think it was 0.2.5 so let's just check that was right so 0.2.5 cool so yep we've got the latest release and then to create a recipe it's really simple we do cargo bit bake and it's given us a recipe file so we're just going to move that up into our recipes, that's two levels up, recipes demo, and Rust directory. So it helps if I remember how the move command works. So we've got a recipe for ox, and we're going to do the same thing with ripgrep. We're going to find the URL to clone this from. And then we're going to find the latest release is 12.1.1. And we're going to generate a recipe. And we're going to move the recipe into our recipes directory. So we've got recipe for ox, we've got recipe for rip crap. We're going to look at our demo image recipe and we're going to add in here ox and rip grab. So in theory maybe that would be all we'd need to do but I am not expecting either of these recipes to work immediately out of the box. I've had a brief look at this before 
and I did run into some problems so I have a rough idea what to expect but we're going to try fixing things as we find them. So next step then is going to be to build this and see what goes bang. So I'm going to build another terminal here just makes it a little bit easier for managing things and at the minute as I'm still running Arch on my build machine here I'm going to be using a Podman container the crops container images for building the Octo project stuff and yeah let's let's start a container so I'm just copying the command that I've got that looks slightly wrong there I'm a little confused about how that's appearing but let's, let's assume it's right and run that command I think it's just the way it's been pasted into the terminal it's kind of spewed some extra characters that didn't get overwritten properly but yeah, we're now running inside a container that's got all the dependencies for building with the Oxo project. It's based on Debian 10, so that's a much more stable base than Arch Linux for building with the Oxo project. And we have a CAS configuration file that I showed earlier on. So building this is pretty easy. We're just going to CAS build and then the test image file that we've got. So that's going to go and download the layers that we're using, check out the done file branch that we want, build a local.conf file and a bblayers.com file, and then it's going to start a bit bake. So one thing that takes an extra minute or so here is cloning the Pocky repository. But the other layers cloned pretty quickly there. Cool, so it's got the layers we want and it has started the build so it's passing our recipes first and we have a parse error so that's failed pretty early. Um, so this is our rip grep recipe it has an unparsed line. So let's, let's have a look at the recipe it's created. So this looks pretty much as we expect. Okay, this is definitely not looking right. With a space in this string and it's not picked up the MD5 sum for the license. But I think this is what it's complaining about. So the summary line is split over the summary entry is split over three lines. I think that's the parse error. Yeah, so it's this summary line because the quote beginning isn't terminated on the same line and there's no line continuation. Bitbake is saying that that's an unparsed line. So this is pretty easy for us to fix. We can just append line continuations onto here so that all of this gets merged together into one line. But, you know, it, the, the cargo bit bake tool shouldn't really be generating a setting that doesn't work here. So we're not going to have time to fix cargo bit bake today but I do want to file a bug for this so I'm going to get a new browser window using my browser that's actually logged in and go to cargo bit fake and file an issue so see if any of these are what we want. 
No, I think we need a new issue for this. So let's see why is this failing. Um, so the looking at rip graph itself, let's look at the cargo.toml file. So it's got this multi-line description entry, and so I assume what Cargo Bitbake is doing is putting the description into a summary. So it's putting the description here into a summary line in our recipe. So yeah, we need Cargo Bitbake to handle this. So what we're going to do, we can get a persistent link to this version of this file in case it changes. So the quickest way of doing that is just to pick up the commit, browse the files, and then find cargo.toml again. So we're going to copy this URL so that we can use it in our issue. So we're going to say cargo bit bake generates on parsable recipe when cargo.toml has a multi line description. I don't know how you spell parsable. We're just going to go with this. So, we run cargo bit break for a project which has a multi line description entry in the cargo.toml file. Generates a recipe which Bitbait cannot pass. For example, when I need cargo Bitbait or rip grep, I use 12.1.1 results in this issue. the cargo.toml file there. Cargo bitbake should either generate a short summary or use line continuation characters, i.e. A backslash. Um, actually, I'm going to say cargo bit make sure you generate a shorter summary. Merge the description into one line or use line continuation characters in the recipe. Cool. I don't think there's any need to capture the actual bit bake error here. We've described it well enough. So we filed a bug for that, and in our recipe we've worked around it by adding backslashes. Now, I'm not happy with this license files checksum line either. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fix this where we are now. So I'm still in the ripgrep source directory here. So this has license-mit and it also has unlicense. And those are the two licenses that I used in this project. So we're actually going to take the MD5 sum of both files. So if the MD5 sum license MIT and unlicense we're actually going to add both of these entries to 
license files checksum. So I'm going to do this by copying the whole block into here and then rearranging the text that we get. So this may look a little strange while I write it, but should result in the right thing in the end. So it's MD5 equals So the bit of Vim magic, we can do that. And we need line continuation characters. So I think that's right. Uh, if I remember my license files checksum syntax correctly, then that should be correct. So we're going to give this another try. build this test image again. So it's complaining about the license value has an invalid format. License names must be separated by the following characters. So it wants us to use uh, an OR symbol instead of the word OR. So while this is running, we're going to change that. So yeah, this is where it says license here. We're going to change it to an OR symbol rather than the word OR, and we're going to save that again. Cool. So it's throwing errors that the base hash isn't deterministic because I've edited the file while the build was running. So this is the sort of error that you can see if you get a little bit too enthusiastic and you edit a file while the build is running. But we're not going to worry, we're going to let this at least get a little bit further, see if RipRep will, and Ox will actually compile. So coming back to this, and I've moved myself out of the way as well, we have an error in Ox as well this is saying, I think this is likely our error message. It's the first thing on here that says error. So it says that this is not a recognized feature for this target, but it says ignoring feature. So I don't think that's going to be the cause of the build failure. I'm not seeing anything else immediately obvious. I think it's going to be this. Create panic abort does not have the panic strategy abort. So we've definitely got a rust error here. It's not something I'm familiar with from Yocto project or building C projects or anything like that. But I think this is going to be our error. So if we copy this and let's throw this into a search engine. So we've got a couple of entries from 2016. Again, these, these are issues, but they're issues that have been closed. But I am seeing that there's this panic equals abort here. Again, I'm only seeing things from 2016. Yeah, I am seeing that this is to do with has the following in its cargo.toml file. So 
So I've, I've got a rough idea what this means. It's to do with whether Ross tries to unwind the stack and possibly prep something useful when a panic occurs or whether it just aborts immediately. So I wonder in ox are we enabling panic equals abort? So where would we find that? We'd be looking in ox, we'd be looking in the cargo.tumble file. So yeah, we've got for profile release, we are enabling panic equals abort. We're also enabling link time optimization and something else that I don't exactly know the meaning of yet. We list some dependencies. So I wonder if I can just drop out panic equals abort on here. I wonder if that will be enough. So if I remove this in the source directory, we're going to have a git diff here. We've removed the line. So we're going to generate a patch file to make this change during our Yoxo project build. So we're going to commit this with, we're going to say disable panic equals abort. And we're just going to format a patch from that change. And we're going to look at that patch. So we've generated a patch that removes this panic equals abort line. Since it seemed that we we're having some problems with that. Now we want to add this patch into our build. So we could put it in a layer and we could reference it from the recipe, but the recipe is auto generated. The recipe is generated using cargo dip bake. We kind of want to be able to regenerate the recipe and not lose this setting. So this is why at the bottom of these recipes that are generated with cargo dip bake, we have these include lines. So we can use one of these. We can use ox dash package versions. The package version in this case is 0.2.5. So we can create a new file called ox dash 0.2.5.inc and that should be included when building ox version 0.2.5. And in here we can just say source URI plus equals this patch file. So we're just going to grab the name of our patch file and paste that in here. And we're going to move the patch file into our layer. So we're going to generate a new folder, box-o.2.5, and we're going to move our patch file into here. So. Yeah, we've done this in a separate ink file because we don't want to edit the auto-generated recipe, but the auto-generated recipe has this include line at the bottom, which will pull in our include file. We reference a patch file by name, and we've put our patch file in the layer in a directory with an appropriate name for bake to find it. So when we rerun the build, it should try to apply this patch to ox and see if that makes a difference. We've also changed the rip grep recipe. Now this one I've, I've edited the recipe itself because these were problems in the recipe. 
I maybe could have just overrided things in, the, in an include file, but I'd have still had to do something about this somewhere in line because it wouldn't have passed at all. We can't fix a pass error by overriding things in an include file. So for this one, I think I'm just going to accept that I've edited the generated recipe for ox. It's a little bit nicer. We've put our customization in an include file. So let's see where we're up to with this. I'm just going to close a few editors to make sure that I've not got any unsaved changes. Doesn't look like I've got any. Let's give this another go. So we've fixed an error in ox and we've fixed an error in rip grep and we want to see what happens. So we are seeing a warning that we're missing a generic license file for unlicensed but at this point I'm not too worried about that. That's just saying that in the list of license files in Open Embedded Core, it doesn't actually have an entry for unlicensed with the generic license text. So it looks like RipGrip has maybe built correctly there. I think that was just a packaging change because we've changed the license line. Ox is obviously having to rebuild and it's succeeded at compiling. So that's pretty nice. That's what we want to see. So we're just going to wait for this to finish. Um, okay, so yeah, there's another Statement saying the license listed on the license was not in the license is collected for the recipe ripper. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. This may be due to this generic license text missing. But for now we're not going to worry too much about those warnings. We do seem to have had successfully built applications. And we did list these entries in the image. Let me check that briefly. I'm doubting whether I've done this, but I think I did. Yes, we added ox and we added rip grep. So we should have a, an image now that's got these things in it. So we're going to cast, we're going to run cast, I'm going to use the shell plugin. And this lets us run a thing other than bitbake. So we can use this to run run QMU. We can run QMU, we're going to know graphic, and we're going to use slurp, which means the software based user mode IP stack rather than the tunnel and tap drivers in the kernel. So because we run in a container, this is just a little simpler. To configure. So let's give this a go. So it's booting our image in a QMU machine and this is QMU ARM64. So yeah we have a couple of things. We should have rip grep which I think uses RG as its command line name and we should have ox installed as well. So we've got two things installed here. Let's give them both a test. So let's rip grep, remember my grep syntax, recursively grep for let's say serial and slash etc nothing. Maybe SSH <laughs> um, try and think of something that will be definitely be in there. Root should definitely be in there. So we've got something weird with the syntax here. I 
dash r is replace. Okay, so this doesn't directly copy the syntax of grep itself. So we're looking for like a recursive option. I mean, this will grep the standard in if we don't give it a file name, so we can use rip grep to grep its own help for recursive. Recursive, okay, so maybe rip grep is recursive automatically. Let's drop that dash r argument. Cool, that's good. So yeah, rip grep works pretty neatly. And how about ox? How about our ox editor? Let's edit Etsy slash profile. Cool. We could add a line to the bottom of our profile that says echo hello. So it's a little bit slow to update the screen here. Maybe just because we're running under QMU arm. So there's no there's no way of using something like KVM to speed this up, it's emulating these instructions. So then try and remember how to save things with Ox. I've only used this once to see how it works. Um, I know it's Control X to exit. Is it Control S to save? Yeah, Control S says file saved and then we should be able to Ah, it's control Q to exit. So if we cat C profile, yeah, we've saved that using Ox. So yeah, we have successfully built two applications that are written in Rust and tested them on QMU on. That was not too difficult. There's a little bit of fiddling with recipes. There's a little bit of patching out this panic abort setting because it led to issues and there was a little bit of fixing the auto-generated recipe here. I filed a bug for the summary line not passing in the recipe that was generated. I'm not worried about the license files and the license line at this stage. It may need, need a little bit more thinking to decide whether that's a bug that we want to file or not. Well, the summary line was definitely a bug we wanted to file. So yeah, what we're going to do now is add these things to our layer. I'll add the recipes to our Git repository. So we're going to do them one at a time. We're going to add ox first. We're just going to take rip grep out of our image recipe so we can include the entry in the image recipe as well as the new recipe itself. So let's git add everything to do with ox. And let's git add our image. And let's git commit that to say add Box editor to our demo image and then let's do another commit to add rip grep so add rip grep back to our image we can just add recipes demo here and it will add the recipe and the recipe for rip grep and the recipe for our image and we can get commit this saying add rip grep to our demo image. And then we're just going to check that these are right by doing git log p. So we've got commit add rip grep to our demo image, which modifies the image recipe and, mod and creates recipe for rip grep. 
There's some stray white space there. Let's fix that quickly. So that was in the rip rep recipe at the end of this line. So we add that again, do a commit and end without editing the message. And let's take another look at the log. This is no white space error, I hope. Yeah, that's looking good. And we've got a commit that says add the ox editor, modifies our demo image recipe, and it adds the patch file, and it adds our recipe. Did I miss the .inc file here? Ah, the .inc file is here, it's just very small, it's a single line. So yeah, I'm happy with both of those. And then I should be in a position, let's look what branch we're on. We're on our Dunfell branch of our MetaRoss demo layer, and we're two commits ahead, so we should just be able to push those changes up to GitLab. So let's finish off by just taking another look on GitLab and refreshing this. Yep, that's looking good. It's got our new commits. And yeah, just to kind of point you at where we are, this is on my GitLab account, uh, gitlab.com slash pbarker.dev slash rust slash meta rust demo. Cool, I think that was a pretty successful little session of adding some recipes for a couple of applications written in Rust. So I'm going to leave it there. Thanks very much for watching this video, folks. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave comments on here if you have any. Um, that'll let me know that you're interested in this content and you want to see some more videos like this. You can also interact with me over on Twitter. I am at pbarker underscore dev on Twitter. I uh, look forward to any comments or questions on there as well. So until next time, see you again.